And hello, everybody. It is Wednesday, <coughs> the 3rd of October, excuse me, and we are back on campus, but this is uh, this cast is for those of you who are uh, still at home due to illness or quarantine, as well as our virtual students in Edmentum for an extra credit assignment, and for all students as a general support to better understand the time period between World War I and World War II. Uh, today we're going to investigate how between the wars there was a large change in how art and architecture, which is something you see all the time, uh, changed and it reflects an overall dissatisfaction with society um, based upon the horrors of World War One. World War One really made people check every element of modern society and say is it worth it all, all the death and destruction and a lot of people began to cast away old ideas in uh, and chose new ones. So we're going to look at some art styles. Uh, two of the large uh, art artists who were important are Picasso and Brack. And one of the things they started to do was they started to create a radically different form of painting and, and other media and sculpt and other media and artistic expression. Uh, it was called abstract art. Abstract art is not meant to be realistic. Uh, up till then, even with the Impressionist, uh, it was very much based in realism. If you look at the works of Monet and, of course, the classic artists of the 19th century, uh, the, like an example would be Washington crossing the Delaware, trying to make things very realistic and all evolved with form and accuracy. Uh, this style is not at all concerned with looking realistic, but using different types of devices to create a new art. And you can see in the picture here by Picasso of a cowboy with a gun. Uh, it's his depiction of a cowboy, and he uses a lot of geometric shapes. Look at all these different, um, all these different types of triangles and quadrilaterals and uh, odd shapes, but definitely using straight lines and the use of curves and lines and the context of symmetry, but also the context of parallelism and then perpendicular lines to create a real impression. The non-realistic use of color to make, uh, again, an overall impression. Uh, you have this tough guy here and he has red lips. It almost looks like he has lipstick on. And the tremendous use of color, uh, so bold, uh, creates an abstract form of art that you're not quite sure how what he's saying and it leaves a lot up to the interpretation of the viewer. Another form is surrealism. Surrealism combines aspects of realism with dreamlike, unrealistic qualities. Here's one of the great examples of surrealism. This is by Kahlo, Frida Kahlo, a Mexican artist. And this painting here is called The Two Fridas. And uh, you can see that it's realistic. The women do look very real. They're dressed in settings. But the background, the storm and the clouds, it's realistic, but it's not quite as dreamlike. And then when you start looking at the details, her heart is, ex what heart is open and exposed and is hurt, and she's dressed in a very traditional Mexican dress. Um, there's, these look like flowers if you look at them, but they're really drops of blood that are coming from her heart. This is a weak heart. Here is the modern Frida, uh, dressed in bold clothing. Her arms are showing somewhat although you would never, I would never consider Kahlo a flapper, but she's showing arms, which was something new. She's holding something that's important to her. It appears in both pictures. Uh, I'm not going to give you too much detail about that, but it's, a, it's basically an image of her husband, who she and he had a very, temp, um, very testy relationship. Um, but you can see here that it's combining the two freedoms, two parts of her. They're connected. They're joined. Uh, they're connected here by, and their hearts are one. One is healthy, one is dying. The traditional baby is dying, and this new woman, this 20th century woman, is emerging. It's a combination of dreamlike trait and realism to create an overall surrealistic pace. In architecture, a rejection of traditional architecture, and two new major uh, designs became popular. One was the Bauhaus. Um, design, which is a more industrial design meant for urban settings, and the idea is that the buildings are bold, powerful, and reflect functionality. And this is the Bauhaus style uh, architecture done at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. That's a pretty striking building, and you can see again 
it's not a classical type building like you might see in the downtown with the, the columns, etc. using Greco-Roman style. It's using a new style based on geometric shapes, mostly quadrilaterals, but interspersed by some unusual shapes that are not quite uh, you know, following the lines of a geometric shape, but you can definitely see that they are made of straight lines. Another style was that of Frank Lloyd Wright, and what he wanted to do, in, mostly in housing, was create houses that took natural beauty and had it blended seamlessly with natural surroundings, rather than making, say, a colonial house or a shaker house or a different house. The ranch style house is a big part of Frank Lloyd Wright's design. So all the ranches you see, but originally they were designed to be very rustic houses. And you can see what he did here. He designed a long driveway to go to a place where the sun would set naturally. Uh, it creates a powerful image of length and beauty. And all the lines are following this road, which goes out to the sunset. So. Right style is to use nature and space to create an overall impression that, again, is not a traditional colonial house, a Tudor house, or something like that. In the last few days, we've looked at how culture, science, and the arts show an increased rejection of the values that of the 19th century and the early 20th century, the pre-war period. What role do you think World War I plays in this rejection of the old ideas, the horror of the war? What role did it play in changing culture, the rise of women, uh, flappers, the indulgences spoke about by Fitzgerald and the great Gatsby, um, the art that you've seen, the building styles that you've seen, all these are rejections of the standards before the war. What role did World War I play in the rejection of these ideas and the forging of new ideas? That's all I have for you today. It's great to be back with you, and remember, it's always a great day to be a rougher.